Hey everybody. I am pretty darn excited to be doing a review for the J Flowers SMO carbon fiber shaft. So I like to do things a little bit differently on my channel. Um, I like to present some things that maybe you haven't seen in other videos. I think there's three or four other videos out there that I've talked about this shaft in particular. Um, I'd like to offer you something a little bit different. So we're going to be talking about carbon fiber shafts, what this represents because J Flowers is, uh, well, this is kind of an announcement for them. It's kind of a coming out party because they're competing against the big boys with this one. We're going to talk about that leaked video. We're going to analyze it, talk about carbon fiber shafts, talk about where you're coming from, right? Because that's probably one of the most important things is you have to understand where you're coming from. Are you coming from another carbon fiber shaft? low deflection are you coming from a standard shaft with no low deflection right these things are important because that represents a jump so we're gonna talk about that we're gonna talk about some even some economics most importantly we're gonna get this into the hands of real accomplished players and just sort of get their opinion on the shaft so there's that and a whole lot more so let's do this is that you bud Hey, bud. Okay, let's get down and dirty. I've got a declaration for you. YouTube requires me to tell you that I received this pool shaft for free. I reached out to them on Instagram, jflowerscues.com, and I said, hey, I know you guys got a new SMO low deflection shaft. That's supposed to be the creme de la creme. I'd love to get my hands on it and give a review and they said sure we love your videos we'd love to get one out to you so they sent it to me and so yeah i have to tell you that i received this shaft for free however this is not a sponsored video i am not on the payroll they're not paying me i am not an ambassador for jflowersqs.com so the opinion i'm going to give is an honest one and i'm going to look at it pragmatically as my my best friend, Andrew Jaworski says at Jaworski Pool Practice, a pool cue is a highly personal item and he's not wrong. It is. So that's the angle I'm always going to come at this with you is I'm going to give you my opinion. I'm going to tell you what I'm feeling. Most importantly, like I said in the intro, we're going to get it into the hands of real players and we're going to hear what they have to say, right? This is their coming out party. They want to compete with the big guys, the Revos, the Synergies, go down the line, the Ignites, right? So my declaration to you is, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm not pushing this on you. I'm just trying to get you some basic facts and if you're in the market or if you're interested in it, maybe you'll pull the trigger on it. So the theme of this video, I'm gonna be asking the question, continuously is it in the conversation what do i mean by that i mean can it compete against the big boys the revos synergy the ignite go down the line okay i mentioned those three because those are the three cues that they went up against in that leaked video okay is it in the conversation and that's all that counts we all have brand loyalty right uh, when i get it into the hands later in the video i didn't expect them to say wow this is better than my cue this is better I, I didn't expect that. I asked the question, is it in the conversation? How does it feel? If it feels good to those players, well, you know, Jay Flowers has done it, right? They're competing against them. And most importantly, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about price, very competitively priced. So remember that, that's the theme of this video. Are they in the conversation? Okay, let's quickly talk about what a carbon fiber shaft is comprised of. So we're all on the same page on, you know, so we have a basic frame of reference of what we're dealing with here. Here is the old, well, I don't say it's old, it's a year old. It's the shaft that I've been playing with for the last year. And uh, what makes up this shaft? What makes up a carbon fiber shaft? Well, you basically have your insert here and that, you know, that will basically decide what kind of pin in the joint goes in. So on the SMO, it does the radial, the 3 8 by 8 radial or the unilock. Um, so then you've got your insert, you've got a shock absorber, then you've got a, 
a foam that gets sprayed into the sheath. So the sheath is the outside. You have another shock absorber at the very top. Then you have a ferrule. Sometimes people opt for a sight plate and then you've got the tip. That's basically it, right? J Flowers is not divulging the types of materials, okay? But, and trust me, I've tried. I've tried to get that out of them. So that's basically what a carbon fiber shaft cue is. So, oh, and by the way, J Flowers, thank you for sending this shaft in a box. When I got my Dante 2, it came in sort of like this floppy case, which is, I mean, better than some probably. I don't know. But anyways, when you get the case, you've got a write-up, you've got a certificate of authenticity with a serial number, you get some wipes. We're gonna be talking about this briefly and you've got an Allen key with a set screw. So what that's supposed to do is, it's supposed to change the weight of your shaft. So we put that in, screw that in. There's also J Flowers SMO. It comes in kind of a sheath. And here it is. Here's the shaft. So right off the hop, the big difference is you see these rings that they've put into the shaft on the bottom by the joint and also by the uh, ferrule. Another interesting point, it's a minor point, is the etched on the old uh, carbon fiber shaft that came with my Dante, this etching lines up with the J Flowers logo, right? So obviously they had the cue together and they were able to etch it. So it's just a nice little thing that J Flowers does. That's not possible with this. So when you get this SMO, the etching doesn't line up with the J Flowers logo anymore. And not, and not that I thought that it should, um, that would be damn near impossible. So it is what it is, but there is the shaft. Okay. Before I start measuring and weighing and comparing the SMO to the other carbon fiber shaft, I want to read you guys what's going on on jflowerscues.com. So they have a nice infographic on their website, basically showing the three options that you have now with J Flowers Cues. You've got the classic, which is what I have with my Dante. You've got a crown, a mid range, if there is such a thing. And there is an SMO shaft, the one we're talking about today, right? So the classic, they say low deflection, the crown, very low deflection, and then the SMO, super low deflection. <laughs> when they compare the, the carbon fiber for each one, the carbon fiber for the classic, aero grade A, go down the line, the crown is aero grade double A, and SMO, aero grade triple A. I am not a chemist. I have no idea what that means. Uh, so I cannot tell you yay or nay on that. Could be just writing on a page. Technology for the classic is standard. The crown is advanced and the SMO has next gen. So if we go back to the tips actually, which is a consumable, the tip for the classic is a standard. It came with a Mori medium for mine. I ripped it off cause it was horrible. Uh, the crown comes with a Kamui black clear. I played with that tip. It's a good tip. Um, the SMO comes with the Town Fusion. That's important because when I ripped off my Mori Medium, I put the Town Fusion on. So when I'm doing the comparison between the two carbon fiber shafts, we have the same consumable on the top of the shaft. Okay, so that's important. Different tips, tips play differently. So that's important. So now when I make the comparison, when I did, and I've had this shaft in my hands for about a month now, right? And I've really given it a good long while to test it between the two, okay? So having the same tip on there is super important, okay? The thing that they don't talk about on this sheet is actually the Pro Taper. And we're gonna be taking a look at that because that is the biggest difference between the Classic and the SMO. And I'm not sure if the Crown has a Pro Taper. I should have looked into that. But we're talking about the SMO today and I'm telling you that it has a Pro Taper and I'm gonna show that to you.
All right, let's get down and dirty. We're gonna start measuring up the SMO shaft for some vital statistics, okay? So um, the biggest difference that you're gonna see between the two shafts is the taper. The SMO shaft has a pro taper. So in case you don't know what a pro taper is, let's quickly go over it. A pro taper is not a conical taper. Okay, so a pro taper, you're gonna have your widest point at the bottom, just like a conical. It's going to go up, but then once you're past your joint, it's going to flatten out and not be going in anymore. It'll be flat and it's going to maintain that taper flat until the tip, okay? That usually occurs 10 to 14 inches from the tip of your cue. A conical is very simple. It's like a cone, right? Just very gradual and it's gonna be consistent the whole way. So you've got your wide point at the butt and it's going to go slowly up towards the tip in a cone-like fashion, okay? And that's the difference. So what's the argument for a pro taper? Well, the biggest one is People who play with it think that it hits different. I'm not going to get into that debate. Um, and on a, on a more minor side, maybe, they say because it's a consistent taper when you're feathering, it's not going to affect the cue when you're aiming for your contact point on your cue ball. I will say that I think that's kind of a silly point because that's what we feather for, right? If I have my conical, my conical uh, shaft here, I'm not going to pull the trigger on my stroke if I'm not feathering to my contact point. So I don't know if I, if I, if I agree with that, but to each their own. Probably the biggest thing is people think that the pro taper affects the hit. And it may well be because this is the first time I've ever hit with a pro taper. <laughs> I never did. I had my Hubler for decades and then I went to this J Flowers. Let's measure though. Let's, let's see what the pro taper is all about. Just to prove to you guys. So if I take this handy dandy tool, I guess I should zero this here. I'm not a machinist like Andrew. He's better at this stuff than I am. 12.47, okay, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. If I go down way down here, let's see what it measures to. 12.45, so I'll put my thumb there, maybe I'll go here. 12.46, 12.49, 12.52, so it's basically starting to go up there maybe. Yeah, 12.64, 12.51. So if I put my thumb there, I'm gonna quickly measure it. Pro taper is gone back basically 14 and three quarters, roughly. I'm not going to get too in depth on how far the pro taper goes back, but that basically proves to you that, you know, you've got a pro taper. So if I weigh this, understand that my scale doesn't go to hundredths of an ounce. It only goes to tens. So it will round up. Okay. That's important. But, you know, truthfully, the weight of these things really doesn't matter to me because, well, I'll explain what I'm doing with my extension in a bit. So I got 3.3 ounces for this shaft, right? If I take that off and I measure the old, the classic one that I've been shooting with for over a year, that comes out to 3.7. So the SMO is lighter than the old classic which is kind of interesting to me. I don't know how much of a difference it's gonna make, but it is, it's lighter. Even with the weight bolt, let's get on to the weight bolt. So you get this Allen key and you've got a weight bolt. If I measured it on my scale, it ends up being 0.1 of an ounce. It's probably less than that, right? Like I said, my scale rounds up. 
So it's going to try to do its best to show that there's something on top, which is what it's doing. It's saying 0.1. It's probably less. So let's just say it is 0.1. Probably isn't. It's less. I stick that into the SMO and it's still going to be weighing less than the classic. So I'm just saying that's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and stick it in. Don't want to over tighten it. I just make it snug so it's not going to ever remove. Don't want to rattle in there. 3.4 ounces. Okay. If I put the two shafts side by side, like so, and trust me, I'm getting old here, guys. I am getting old. I'm going to put on my readers. If I closely look, I can't tell the difference in the quality of the sheath, right? I mean, I can see the pro taper. That is very obvious. You've got this pro taper. It's much thicker at this point than this point here with the SMO. So that is going to be the biggest difference in your hit. Okay. Um, when I feel it, I can't feel the difference, right? Um, I've been hitting with the classic for over a year. I've never had to wipe it down and it's still as beautiful as day one. You know, it may look a little duller. No, I won't even say that <laughs> to me. It looks identical. Okay. I can't tell the difference. The only thing I can tell the difference with is the pro taper. So. That's important. As for the weight bolt, I reached out to J Flowers Cues and I asked for some, you know, some information on it. And they said they're, they've got a social media guy and they're working on the video. So uh, that should be interesting because uh, they weren't divulging their secrets. Okay. Um, the, the next step, if I wanted to compare these two cues, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> this is proprietary technology. I am not going to take my grinder and grind these open and try to compare the difference, right? In their video, they say the foam is the secret sauce and they say it's a different type of foam. They say that there's different inserts that and shock absorbers that have been put in the SMO that justify the cost increase. That's up for you to decide if it's worthwhile to you. But in the end, it all comes down to hit. So I reached out to jflowerscues.com to try to get a little bit of info, a little bit of dirt, a little bit of juicy stuff on, you know, what the three pros, Dennis Arcolo, Earl Strickland, Rodney Morris, did what their input was into the shaft. I couldn't get it out of them. I actually reached out to them on Instagram. I didn't, get, I didn't get a response from them either. So that's okay. Um, they have a little bit of a write up. They sent this stuff with the queue, you know, the certificate of authenticity. I kind of wish that they didn't staple it, um, to this, but let's read it. Check my glasses, SMO shaft developed by three world billiards legends, Earl Strickland and Rodney Morris and Dennis Arcolo and the Jay Flowers research and development team to provide a better playing experience and performance for billiard fans. Characteristics of the shaft. Okay, so this is what they're claiming that the shaft plays like. A unique taper of SMO's shaft makes this Q shaft more elastic than plain feel like solid wood shaft. So, Okay, so that might be some of the input that the three pros did. Maybe how far the pro taper goes. Um, you can only get a 12.5 millimeter uh, diameter with the SMO. There's no uh, play that way. They will not offer it. So maybe that was one of them saying, no, 12.5, that is it. Um, with more elastic shaft, elast I have no idea what elastic, what they mean by elastic shaft. With which is higher than the elasticity of all the carbon fiber Q shafts on the market that get more easy to make cue ball position when playing soft stroke shot. Honestly, um, 
my thoughts on that are nothing will ever replace fundamentals, okay? You can have the best equipment in the world. If your fundamentals are trash, your game is gonna be trash, okay? So just always take this stuff with a grain of salt, right? They are a manufacturer and they're trying to sell this cue to you, this shaft to you, all right? So they're gonna talk that game, you know? They all do it, okay? Remember, the most important thing is you, the pool player, and how you react to it. And nothing replaces fundamentals. <laughs> That's my little spiel. With ferrule of convergent force ring structure that will make the elasticity of the Q shaft to reach the extreme power value, which also gets extreme low deflection when playing English shot. The appearance is personalized, joint ring with multi-layer rings showing the characteristics of the new generation. And then it gives some basic measurements. Uh, let's go back to C. Also get extreme low deflection when playing an English shot. Okay. I'm not going to rant too much here, but I'm going to say my spiel. This is a sphere, okay? Have you ever heard the term, you can't change the laws of physics? Okay, we all have, right? You can bend them. That's what a low deflection shaft is, is doing. It's bending the laws of physics, but you're never gonna change the laws of physics. So if our Q-tip hits off center, there's going to be deflection. That's the laws of physics. It's going to veer slightly. Remember, this is a sphere. Even this tip is spherical in nature, right? It's rounded. So a rounded, a rounded is going to be hitting around, right? And if it's off center, it's going to veer slightly, okay? That's never gonna change. So it's, this is gonna to get to a point where, my opinion, it's just talk, okay? Now, there is that leaked video, okay? We are going to be breaking that down. But, you know, in the end, it's going to come down to your feel and you. I've said that a couple times now. So remember that, okay? There's always gonna be deflection. There's no such thing. And in my opinion, there will never be such a thing as a no deflection cue. It's just not possible. Not on Earth. Maybe on a different planet with different gravitational forces. But I digress. All right, we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room and that is that leaked video that you can find at Q listings. Now, my two bits on this video are this. I think there has to be some corporate money behind this. Uh, just a regular Joe Schmo in his basement can't have a setup like this. Um, they've got a robot arm, they've got a laser, they've got a radar detector for the speed. So the thing of it is, is that no faces are shown, right? And who's to say that when it came to the J Flowers Q, they didn't adjust the speed on the robot arm, right? There's no independent arbiter that's in the room basically saying, okay, I'm making sure that nothing gets fooled with, but at the same time, I'm going to go back to my regular point here, guys, is um, we are absolutely nitpicking. This video is a nitpicker, right? But it's really, really interesting. And, and if it is valid, if they didn't change any of the variables, this is very revealing, <laughs> very revealing. Jay Flowers does a very, very good job. The SMO has announced itself and now it is in the conversation and that is the only thing remember this is a personal item okay but the most important thing is is it in the conversation i think it is i thought i'd do something a little bit fun here i've actually broken out my road NTG2 microphone. That's a professional microphone because I care about you guys so much. I'm going to get the clearest sound for you. 
because it is kind of a big deal for a lot of people. They don't like the sound of certain carbon fiber shafts. So what we're gonna do is I've got my mic set up here. I'm going to start out with the Hubler. It's just a regular shaft with an old Kamui clear tip on there. So probably not gonna sound very good. I'm gonna to switch to the Dante 2 with the classic shaft first. Remember, I've got a Taum Fusion on there, the exact same tip that is on the SMO shaft that we're gonna try last. So what I'm gonna do is hit about a medium pace, two shots for each, one in the center, and then one with a full tip of bottom on it at the same pace. So let's give it a shot. Hubler sound test, center. Hubler sound test, bottom. The classic J Flowers, center ball. J Flowers classic, bottom. Okay, now I'm switching shafts. That shaft there, the classic sounded better than the Hubler, that's for sure. But it should, because the tip on the Hubler hasn't been used and it's very old at this point now. Now, the SMO. I don't think I mentioned in this video, but you know, I was worried. I was worried that this wasn't gonna fit like the shaft that came with the Q, but it's absolutely perfect, so that's nice. Okay, the last two hits here. The SMO, center. And the SMO, bottom. Okay, so I don't know what you're gonna get from that. Uh, it sounds fine to me. It's a really full hit. Um, if this sort of stuff interests you, head over to YouTube and head over to Q Listings because he over there did an entire video comparing a whole whack load of carbon fiber shafts. So um, Q Listings, if you'd like these sound bites, let me know, I'll send them to you. When you're in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, there is only one place to go to if you're looking for a serious game of pool, and that is Top Shots, Billiards, and Ping Pong. No offense to the competitor, but they just curtail to a different crowd. So Top Shots, it always is. And sure enough, as I'm there hitting with the SMO, two very, very good pool players are playing on tables pretty close to me and former teammates. So I approached them and I said, hey, can you just hit some shots and let me know how does it compare to your cue. And this is what they had to say. Like, so you hit with a Revo, yep. and what is it like? How does it feel? How close? It, uh, it feels pretty similar. I mean, I probably have to play with them a little bit longer. Too. Okay, so um, what tip do you have on your Revo? Uh, Kamui Black Soft. Okay, cool. And this is the Town Fusion, so they're <laughs> so yeah. It, the tip's a little bit different, right? Yeah. But uh, and the shaft's a little bit more narrow. But just a matter. Of so you play with a 12.9? 12.9. 12.9. Gotcha. Thicker, right? Okay. You can just feel it. 
You can just feel the... the... I can feel this is a lot thinner. Okay. It's not a lot thinner, but you can feel it, right? But is it in the conversation of the Revo and the Ignite, do you think? For sure, yeah, no, it plays well. I mean, like I said, I have to play a little longer, but the first couple balls I hit, it plays pretty good, right? Thanks, Fed. Yeah. <laughs> Any difference than the synergy that I have? It's very close to it. So like what's what size of tip? 12.5. Is it 12.5? Yeah, eh? So yeah. the shaft doesn't feel any different. No difference at all. I'm very like every time I shoot, I feel stiff, stiff shaft. So you like it? I like it. Yeah. Awesome. Sure, yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So what was your final take? Yeah, it hits pretty good. Um, every hit with it was a solid hit. It wasn't like like no miscue type. You know how sometimes you can miscue on a shot? Yeah. It was just a solid hit. Um, you don't get that tinny sound like um, you know sometimes when you hit a ball it's like tinny. Yeah. A tinny. Yeah, yeah. Not like, it sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. So I you mean, shoot with a 12.4 millimeter Revo. This is a 12.5. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, I would definitely give it a shot. Like, if you're interested, definitely try it. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so let's have a chit chat on what they said in these videos here. So let's go to Corey, right? So Corey hits with a Revo, a 12.9 millimeter Revo, and if you don't think that there's a difference between 12.9 and 12.5. You're fooling yourself. I went down to 11.8 millimeter carbon fiber shaft first with J Flowers, and it was it was eye opening. Um, in the end, I retreated back to a 12.5. It definitely gave me a lot of insight to my stroke and a certain amount of cue laziness that had that had crept into my fundamentals. So there is that. But with for me, the 12.5 is where I need to be. Um, Corey plays with a 12.9. So he said, well, it feels much different, right? When you're stroking it because of the 12.5. But what did he say? Hits good, you know, it feels good. It's in the conversation. Let's go to Osama. He hits with a synergy, right? 12.5. What did he say? <laughs> Is it in the conversation? 
He said he can't tell the difference. That's pretty big coming from Usama. You know, this guy plays really, really good high level pool, okay? Marsha plays with a 12.5, so that's important. Revo, okay? So um, when she's hitting around, she said something really interesting. She said, when I'm playing with a carbon fiber shaft, I want to see if I can do less and get the same result, right? And she said, basically, that's what's happening with this, this, with this shaft, right? It took me a while when I went first, when I went to that carbon fiber shaft for the first time in my life, just the classic, it was taking me a little bit of while to adjust to it. And it wasn't until I talked to my friend Darcy where he said, you know what, with a carbon fiber shaft, less is more. So basically what he was getting at is, you know, when I was hitting with my Hubler, to execute a specific shot on the table, you know, maybe I was hitting a full tip of English. Well, with a carbon fiber shaft by rights, you can get the same result and maybe only hit half a tip of English. That's the best way I can put it, right? And once I started realizing that, wham, I saw the, the uptick in the game, right? So that is a really big thing. So for Marsha, she's like, can I do less and get the same result? And she did, she gave it the thumbs up, right? All three of these people, these players that have won at high levels and they're very, very good players, they all said, yeah, it's in the conversation. Now, what are my thoughts? It's in the conversation, folks, okay? That's my final analysis. I believe it's the pro taper that's not on the classic. Okay, I believe it's the pro taper. I can't see the difference in the feel. It feels like the same. They, say, they may say this is triple arrow grade and this is single arrow grade. I can't prove to you because I'm not going to cut this apart that it's different on the inside compared to the classic. I'm not going to do that. What I can tell you is you know, it's got the it's got the same tip. Where I saw the biggest improvement, and this is something that I've been working on for quite some time now, was hitting off the rail. And certainly my power shots basically shots basically like this, right? Where I've got an awkward bridge and I'm hitting off a rail. The long shots where I have to bridge back like so right? And you've got, you know, what I call the hardest shot in pool. And it happens all the time. You're left back here, you cue ball. So basically you can only hit top and your object ball isn't a duck, right? So we've all shot these shots. It could be a straight in shot, but because you're hitting off the rail, just a little bit of error by the time the cue ball travels all that way it's going to make a huge difference and you're not even going to rattle it. You're just going to outright miss it. Right. With this shaft, I noticed an uptick, right? So basically that's the low deflection, right? If I'm a little cue lazy and I slightly hit that cue ball off center, right? How much is it going to deflect with this shaft compared to that shaft? So that leads me to the question, is there less deflection with this shaft? compared to the classic. Yes, that's my final answer. There is less deflection with it. For the simple reason that I had played with this shaft for over a year, okay? And then going to this one, there were certain shots that I was missing. So it is different, right? And it, it's because I was overcompensating just slightly, just enough to miss the shot. And that's when I had to, you know, take some things back into my conscious mind. We've talked about this lots in the channel, take them th some things back to the conscious, work on them and then gain the muscle memory so that it goes back over to the subconscious and you don't have to think about it anymore. So in this case, I don't have to compensate quite as much. It was very, very minor. Okay. You have to understand as a player, if you're coming from a shaft, that is not low deflection. Maybe it's just a regular wood shaft and you're looking to enter this market. Please, please, please understand 
this SMO shaft is going to be a huge jump for you. I remember hitting a Revo for the first time and I had never hit with a low deflection shaft. It was Sandy Badger's Revo. And I was missing all over the place and I'm like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> I realize I haven't been playing as much anymore, but this is bad. And you know, Marsha was there too and Sandy and they were laughing. It was like, it's just the low deflection shaft. You have to get used to it. I thought it was all BS back then. <laughs> it's not BS. So you have to understand, I was coming from this to this. So the jump wasn't that much. That's important, okay? You have to judge it yourself. You know where you're coming from. But is there less deflection in the SMO compared to the Classic? Absolutely there is. So my final thoughts are is, yeah, I'm gonna be playing with this one from now on compared to my Classic. I'll just keep this in my bag. Um, if you ever see a guy or a girl saying, this is it, this is the best, this is what you have to buy, I would click away. <laughs> They're a snake oil salesman, okay? Like I said earlier, Andrew always says, highly personal item, okay? So you are the player, you are the most important person in this decision-making process, okay? So understand that uh, this will take a bit of getting used to. Um, if you play with a Revo or a Synergy or Ignite already, not very long, right? Understand that this is still competitively priced. Still competitively priced. You know, over $100 cheaper, right? This is $400. How much does a Revo cost? A Synergy and Ignite? How much? Do they cost insane okay so that's 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 a whole conversation unto itself so do I recommend it yes I do and I want to thank jflowerscues.com for sending this to me I will be using it every day <laughs> that's everything I have if you made it to this part of the video thank you you uh, you were here for the long haul and I hope that I enlightened you in at least one way along the way so please subscribe to the channel and like the video okay that really goes a long way to you know telling YouTube to get it out there in front of more eyes it's the algorithm anyways in the meantime and in between time I'll catch you on the flip side bye now